الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. They say that the greatest homage that you can pay to truth is to practice it. And I say that because when you look at the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they didn't try to practice Islam. Islam was their life. And that is the difference between that generation and our generation today. We look at ayats and hadith and we try to go out and implement that. And the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was just part of their nature to implement those things. There was a very beautiful incident that happened between Umar and Aisha. After Umar ibn al-Khattab was stabbed, he was leading Salat al-Fajr, and a man by the name of Abu Lu'lu'a, Fayruz, he took a double-edged dagger and he stabbed Umar multiple times. The one that hit Umar in the stomach is the one that eventually caused his death. However, after that incident, they rushed Umar to his house. When Umar regained consciousness, they tried to figure out which wound was the most severe. So they gave Umar something to drink, which a drink called Nabid, and which is a drink that is made of dates and some, some water and some other things. But it's a red color. So when Umar drank it, the juice became, became came out of his navel where he was stabbed, one of the places he was stabbed. And they couldn't tell whether it was the blood or it was the juice. So Umar said, bring me a cup of milk. And when he drank the milk, they seen the, the white milk come out of the wound in the stomach and he knew that that was the, going to be the one that was going to kill him. So Umar sent his son, Abdullah ibn Umar, أَرَسَلَهُ إِلَىٰ عَائِشَ رَضِي اللَّهُ تَلْعَنْهَا وَالْحَدِيثِ فِي سَحِيرِ الْبُخَارِ فَقَالَ he said to his son, Abdullah bin Umar, go to Aisha. This is after he stabbed and he realized he was going to die. He said, go to Aisha and tell her that Umar ibn al-Khattab sends her the salam. But don't say Amir al-Mu'mineen. Don't say leader of the believers because the believers have no leader today. Meaning, I know I'm getting ready to die. I'm not the leader of the believers right now. Right now, this is between me and my Lord. Don't say that Amir al-Mu'mineen because the believers have no leader today. He said, and ask her permission for me to be buried next to my two companions. And that is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr. So Abdullah ibn Umar, he went to the house of Aisha. فَوَجَدَهَا قَائِدَ تَبْكِي And he found Aisha sitting down crying because she heard the news that Umar was stabbed, crying. And he said that, Umar ibn al-Khattab gives you the salams. And he asked your permission to be buried next to his two companions. And Aisha radiallahu anha, listen to what she said. She said, Kuntu uriduhu li nafsi. She said, I wanted that place for myself. Meaning I wanted to be buried next to my husband and my father, myself. She said, nafsi. Today I give Umar precedence over myself. This is the ultimate of wanting for your brother what you want for yourself. And the scholars, they explain, wanting for your brother what you want for yourself, it has three levels. The highest level is to want more for your brother than you want for yourself. That's the highest level. Most of us will never achieve that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the Sahaba, that they want more for those who came to them, even though they were in need of it. They wanted, it, they wanted the companions to have it more than themselves even though they were in need of it. Most of us will never reach that level. The second level is to want for your brother exactly what you want for yourself. And the third level is to not want for your brother what you want for yourself, which is the lowest level, which is actually sinful. But Aisha, she said that I wanted the place for me. But I said today I'm going to give Umar precedence over myself. 
So when Abdullah ibn Umar came back to Umar, they said, your son is coming. Umar said, sit me up so I can see him. And they pushed Umar's back up and they sat him up straight so he could see his son. And he asked him, what did, what did she say? And Abdullah ibn Umar said, Qalat ma tuhib. She said exactly what you liked, what you wanted to hear, and that is that she gave you precedence and she's going to give you the place next to your two companions. Umar anhu. He said, ma kana shay'in ahammu ilayya min hadha. There is nothing in this dunya that was more important to me than being buried next to my two companions. He said, however, he said, when I die, he said, either kulitu, when I die, he said, go back to Aisha for a second time. Because maybe she changes her mind. When I finally die, go back to Aisha and ask her permission again. He said, for in adinat, fedfanni ma'a sahibay. Wa in raddat, fedfanni ma'a maqabil min al-muslimin. He said that if Aisha gives me permission to be buried, then bury me. He said, but if she rejects, and she doesn't want me, she changes her mind, then just bury me with the rest of the Muslims. Look at the humility, the tawadu of Umar Just bury me with the rest of the Muslims. Giving her an opportunity, sometimes people say things under pressure. And sometimes to go back and ask them a second time, maybe they have a change of heart. Maybe she was looking at his position as Amir al-Mu'mineen. That's why he said, don't tell her that I'm Amir al-Mu'mineen, I'm the leader of the believers. I don't want to use my position of authority to influence her, her decision. Right? So he said, you know, go back a second time. So Aisha radiallahu she said, Kuntu Azura Makbara Abi wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wala atahajjab. Li annani akulu hada abi wa hada zawji. She said, Lemma dakhala Umar, wallahi ma kuntu adhul alayhim illa wa ana mutahajiba haya an min Umar. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that when the Prophet sallallahu and Abu Bakr was buried in the home, she said, I used to go visit them, their graves, and I didn't wear hijab. She said, because Abu Bakr is my father and the Prophet sallallahu is my husband. So I used to go visit them, but I didn't wear my hijab when I would go visit them. She said, but when Omar was buried there, she said, Wallahi, I never stepped foot in my house again except that I had hijab on out of haya, out of modesty for the position of Umar. SubhanAllah. And this is a man who's dead and she still has a sense of modesty. But I'm, what I'm saying is that modesty wasn't practiced. That was just a part of her makeup. That was a part of her design as a believer. And we have to get out of this mode of practicing Islam like it's a religion. This is our way of life. Every day we eat, sleep, drink, wake up to Islam, go to sleep to Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنُّسُكِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِكَ لَهِ that say my salah and my slaughtering, my life and my death is all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِكَ لَهِ No partners with him. That Islam can't be a religion that we just practice on Jumu'ah. Islam can't be a religion that we practice when we feel like, you know, we're in a bind, you know, socially or religiously, spiritually, and we need to run back to Islam. That's practicing the deen in survival mode. We're not in survival mode. We have to practice Islam like this is our life. We wake up to Islam. We go to sleep to Islam. We eat, sleep, drink, dress, Islam, everything. And that is the difference between the Sahaba, the Prophet didn't have to tell Aisha to be modest in front of a dead person. That just came naturally. Naturally, she felt modest. She said, I used to visit my husband and my father, and I didn't wear hijab because they were buried in her house. This is her home. She didn't have to wear hijab. That was her husband. That was her father. She said, but when Omar was buried there, wallahi, I never stepped foot in my own house, that area where they were buried at, except that I had on my hijab. Hayat and min Umar. Out of shyness and modesty, how am I going to come here, even though Umar is dead and buried, I still cannot take off my hijab in front of him. And you have Muslim women today who take off their hijab in front of anybody. With no haya, no modesty, no shyness. Wallah Allah, not even shyness before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You come to the masjid and you have on spandex. Wallah Allah, even if you don't wear hijab, even if you don't wear overgarment on a regular basis, at least when you come in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have it on. Haya and mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of modesty before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
If Aisha was modest but in front of Umar, a human being, how much more would her, her modesty be before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It was natural. It was part of their design, part of their makeup. The greatest homage that you can pay to truth is to practice it. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salama tasliman kathira wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.